Hello and welcome, Exiles, to my day two update to the character. Full disclosure, we are now at roughly 22 hours played, so double the play time. We played another like 11 hours yesterday after I made the video, and we made significant upgrades. Now, I decided I would rather make a day two video with this setup rather than go straight to the tri stack. I have pretty much all the gear for tri stack, but I wanted to do this first just to give you guys a showcase of hey, guys, if you don't want to play mines, if you don't want to do my tri stack setup, you can still upgrade the normal Spellblade Energy Blade Inquisitor, and it can be quite strong. So this is what I want to showcase. Essentially, we got an Ivory Tower. I will say this, if you're prioritizing a six link, there is a new beast recipe, which sells for pennies on the dollar. Definitely better than just buying a six link off the market. And as for getting the 8% defense modifier, you do this through a tailoring orb, and the average from my experience, and I've done hundreds of tailoring orbs, is somewhere around one in four to one in five to hit 8% defense. I hit mine on the first try, so I got a little bit lucky there, logged into the streamer client that doesn't exist. But anyways, uh, outside of that, we're using the Cyclopean Coil, we got ourselves an Astramentus, and we got ourselves a little bit better rings than we had before, although I think this is the same ring. Got an okay boot, got ourselves the Wrathbeth, a Shaper's Touch, and I'm still using Malachi's. Eventually, you want to swap this to like a Crown of the Inward Eye as you upgrade more. Eventually, your tree should probably be going over to grab Blood Magic and the Utmost Might cluster, but right now, I was a little bit scuffed on the on the tree, and I'm still doing some of the minion nodes just so I can have faster attack, sleet, attack speed through the Sanctum. We have enough damage, so I'd rather just be able to leap slam faster through the zones because most of the leap, most of Sanctum, to go fast is just to leap slam through a lot of the zones. And I'll showcase that because I'm going to do a full Sanctum run for you guys right now. So this is the gear setup right now, and the reason I'm running two flasks essentially is when you're in Sanctum downtime is easier to have in flasks because you transition through zones so often what ends up happening is your flask could have just started with a full duration you enter a door and you lose 10 seconds of your flask duration thus meaning your flasks have lost that time to gain flash charges it ends up making it so you can't really comfortably run three flasks Valbala in Sanctum, but anywhere else you can pretty much run it comfortably. So if you're doing Sanctum, I'd recommend a two flask setup like this with a Bismuth and a Core Skating. But outside of Sanctum, I would run probably a Core Skating, a Topaz, and a Sapphire, or do a Bismuth, a Core Skating, and a Quicksilver for the extra speed. That's what I would recommend. Now, going into uh, this first Sanctum, I'm going to give you guys a full rundown just to give you guys some of my thought process and to illustrate how we do Sanctums. I have an 83 Forbidden Tome here. I have some relics I've gotten over the course of doing Sanctum that are all these ones right here, which have max gain on boss kill as well as gain resolve. These are just recover mods on boss kill. We're going to do a Blood of Innocence, which makes Lycia basically do 50% more damage and take 50% less damage, which makes Lycia a lot harder. And hopefully this will give you a good idea of what the character looks right now my gear setup i want to say i've invested probably about 15 divines into it but i think the cost of the current setup is a little bit higher probably more closer to 25 if i was going to wager i guess i'm not 100 sure i'm just kind of making random numbers here because the economy is going crazy for example i bought those eight tailoring orbs for 60 a pop and i got told on stream tailoring orbs were up to 80 c so those went up a lot as they're going to keep going up i think tailoring orbs will probably stabilize around one divine uh, but that'll be maybe about one week into the league is roughly when they'll get there, I think. And outside of that, we also got really lucky hitting a six link. I was just trying to get a five and I could run 83 sinks, uh, run 83 sanctums with a five link. Uh, but uh, I started doing the quality life thing where you get to hold down the fusings and I just couldn't, I couldn't take my finger off the button. I was just, I I, I, mean, I, I, mean, I don't have a gambling problem. We'll say that, but I, I, I like to, Never mind. Anyways, so let's just go ahead and give you guys a look at what it looks like doing a 83 Sanctum with um, Penance Brand here on our current setup. Now, you'll notice right now, you'll think, wait, Lance, that damage looks like it sucks. Well, here's a common problem you might run into while doing Sanctums, and that is forgetting to turn on your Energy Blade. I've done this many times before myself. You'll notice here we have 10k ES, and we don't have Energy Blade on, which is all of our damage. So you'll see here it says 95k DPS, but if I turn on Energy Blade, now it says we deal 500,000 DPS. So it's a difference in dealing five times the damage and it's the difference in remembering to actually click the button. So if you're ever thinking, why am I not dealing damage? There's a good chance you turned off your energy blade. Now, the reason I have that now, first off, looking at these afflictions, I think avoid resolve loss is a little bit bad for us because we do have um, a lot of evasion, but at this point we deal so much damage, I rarely get any hit anyways. So I'm just gonna take that one because it feels the most free. The other ones were poison water, which um, isn't too bad because usually you don't have to click on fountains unless you're a little bit on the like, if, you, if you're like barely getting through Sanctums, then you need to click on Fountains to recover Resolve. But when you start winning Sanctums, uh, it's not as big of a deal. But in case you get a Radiant Fountain, you want to be able to click on that without getting a random affliction that will make it a lot more annoying to run the Sanctum, so to speak. 
I like to tag random people and just get extra XP from kills when I can, even if I'm not going to go click up, click up the coins. I'm going to talk a lot faster while, as I'm going through this because I'm trying to describe my thought process. Now, early on, I'm thinking, okay, we're in 83 Sanctum right there. That's 20 Chaos. I'd rather have the Chaos than the loot. I pretty much am always prioritizing at this point the loot, but you need to judge whether or not your character is strong enough to prioritize the loot. For example, if your character is, it's decent and it's most likely going to succeed, but there's a chance it fails if you start making some worse choices, then you need to prioritize a bit more of a safer approach to verify or guarantee you're actually going to succeed on the run there. So for example, if I was tryharding this run, I would have gone for the coin chest to be able to buy more from the merchant later rather than prioritizing this chaos. Uh, but I feel like the character's strong enough now where I can kind of just turn my brain off. And this guy has, he has four dudes and I'm just gonna go around and then I'm gonna put a brand on every single one of them. It should kill all of them. And he's gonna do his explosion and give us some loot. The nice thing is when you kill bosses, uh, with our relics that have uh, resolve on boss kill we get a lot of resolve you'll notice we're already up to 406 and normally the baseline is uh 300 so that's almost an entire what you call a boon now i see here that there's a, a curse pact right here in hemorrhage ultimately i really like to prioritize the curse packs but it's going to force me through purple smoke or sharpened arrowhead and i don't really want to do either of those i'd rather do hemorrhage because this is an affliction that falls off at the end of each floor and generally, unless you need to recover resolve, it's a pretty free affliction. So I like to pick that one personally. Get the guaranteed chaos. I'll get the benevolent fountain. And this guarantees as I go throughout the run. Well, on floor one, I didn't really get that bad of afflictions. So by the time I'm on floor two, I'll just be feeling pretty good. Ultimately, if you start picking up bad inflictions, it can snowball. For example, purple smoke on floor one is a lot more dangerous than purple smoke on floor three. Because if you get it on floor one, then there's a lot of scenarios where you're going to go and you're going to have to choose a random affliction. You don't know what it is, and it could be really bad. Now, we get a Radiant Found here. I'm probably going to click that because Red Orbs aren't that good. And it gives me 200 Inspiration. Pretty much just guarantees this is for 100% a free run in terms of, like, us finishing it. Now, my character's strong enough. I don't really need it. But at the same time, I like getting random boons. And I like the idea of being able to just screw around and make a decent amount of mistakes. Like, later on, when we get to the 50% uh, more defense. Oh, another thing I like about Energy Blade is... You get three damage boons. You get the dagger, which is 50% more damage. You get the 50% more defense boon, which is 50% more damage as well as 50% more defense. And you get the um, uh, the monsters have less life. So there's actually three damage mods instead of two. Most builds, they only get two damage boons. We get three. Radiant Fountain, give me something good. Hairfoot, great. Now we can move faster. That's an awesome pickup. Um, as I was saying, <laughs> um, you'll notice we have... Uh, galvanic field in our setup right now that's only generating us power charges it might do some damage but it's mainly there just for power charge generation i'm gonna go chromes over chisels and i'll go horizon orbs because i'm gonna need those later to fill out my atlas really quickly the nice thing is us going through sanctum we are amassed a lot of random currency now i don't have a lot of currency here because i just spent it all getting really important upgrades like this eyes of the great wolf this helical base that i'm gonna buy i even bought ourselves a frenzy ring which i'm gonna resell now to try to make some money i bought that for 10d and i looked to this morning they're up to 2070 so i'm gonna try to cash in on that investment they'll keep going it up but i'd rather have that 25d in order to make upgrades for my character now we have 330 coins that's not a lot so instead of going to this merchant, which is going to force us into this affliction, I'd rather just go over here, get the chaos orbs, and then get myself another boon from the fountain. The benevolent fountain costs 150 coins, which is quite a lot cheaper than the merchant. Merchant usually offers boons anywhere from the range of 220 to like 420. So if I'm going to get forced into a bad affliction, not get any loot out of it, I'd rather just have the random boon and then go around and... and uh, and move through the sanctum faster while getting the loot from this 10c as well all this chaos you get adds up i'm gonna look at these rewards here we'll go benevolent found into the regret orbs that's probably the most valuable loot there um as for choosing rooms i will try to choose some rooms where i can show you some shortcuts to get through them faster this room is called derelict caverns this one is all about um um essentially killing each of the rares in each guard on the floor before you can advance Usually I can just put up uh, brands on whoever's there and they will die by the time I get to them. I'm gonna get this Jade Flask and use that for later, maybe at some point. But Evelyn Fountain, another damage multiplier. Let's try and find Battlegrounds where you fight Rogue Exiles. Let's try to find a Reliquary is the boss one. We can maybe showcase that one. Seller's one of the ones you can run to the corners. Let's go to the um, 
let's go to the relic so i can show that we'll show a battlegrounds and hopefully we can find a gauntlet because gauntlet is one that you might think you have to run slow and careful but you can actually sprint through it really fast and it, it actually doesn't take that long at all to do um so i want to showcase that if i can find a gauntlet that'd be really good this is a shortcut that i learned over the course of like getting used to sanctum that just really saves you a lot of time ultimately battleground is the room where you're going to fight a bunch of guys and there's going to be a trap in floor two so that's the most dangerous room so a lot of times you want to avoid that unless you're at the point where your character can just kind of destroy it all right direct crepit cellar we don't have a what you call it yet we're in a reliquary this is the boss room which will give us resolve on boss kill uh, as well as he drops a decent amount of coins we'll do this we'll come over here he's going to be dead in a second we'll get his coins we'll move on so that fast room whenever you get a boss fight you can do them really fast because you can just dps them Hopefully there's a gauntlet around here. I'm going to go for the seller for the coins and maybe the merchant to get us some more boons. But ideally, I want to show a gauntlet because there's a really fast route you can get through it if you just sprint. Essentially, the fireballs, they just... Um, essentially, the fireballs, they don't start spawning right away. So if you just if you just sprint straight for going through them, you actually don't even have to think about dodging the fireballs and you save a bunch of times because you, you, you don't have to fight any guards in there. Hopefully... There, okay, sweet. There's a gauntlet here. So we'll go merchant. We'll go into this curse pack and I'll show you the gauntlet route. There like caverns is another one where you just have to kill the guards. Um, each floor in Sanctum has rooms that have different requirements. There's basically four types of rooms. There's a trap room. Um, there's the fight the guards in a close confinement room. There's the uh, basic fight and kill like five or six rare and guards, which is this caverns room. And then there's a find the exit room. Now, generally the trap room and find the exit room, they're pretty much the same thing, which is you want to sprint through as fast as you can. Uh, do I want to double my coins on this floor? Sure. I think that'll pay for itself, probably. Uh, by the time we get through Gauntlet and the bosses, we'll see. All right. So we're going to go through this Gauntlet. I'll show you real quick. All you want to do is just sprint. See, the fireballs aren't there yet. You can jump over here, and then you can leap slam here, and you're at the exit. And the Gauntlet is always that same layout. And on this floor, you can always do that one really for free. Um, I already have some inspiration. I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice and hope I get the all-seen eye. Uh, major boons, pretty much all-seen eyes is the only one you care about. There's a few other ones that are really nice, like ones that disable traps, which makes a lot of the hard floor, uh, hard battleground rooms on floor four a lot easier. Like if you have the four tower room, that's probably one of the hardest rooms for people to do. Um, so the ability to turn off traps, that's a good major boon. There's also one that makes it so you can't get any more minor affliction, which means you can just keep taking a lot of bad uh, afflictions that won't actually get applied to you. But all seen eye is actually the best because it gets you around the most dangerous affliction, which is the golden smoke. It makes it so you can't see your rewards. It also helps you look ahead and say, hey, are there any divines on this floor? No, there's not really any divines. Now, the thing I would say is if you don't see divines, which you need to prioritize, is every single handshake you can because handshake is a randomized reward and every room that's not guaranteed a divine you can maybe try for a high roll on getting some divine so we have three handshakes we can go through if we just go right here and i'm going to go that way just to maximize loot and i'll try to describe the rooms i'm going through as i do them unholy lair is a fight and kill six guards and then you can leave the building so these ones are basically just the ones where you have to go through you have to find the guards and once you kill the guards you can then exit. But if the guards are not alive or the rare is not alive, the door won't occur. So if I've done it correctly, there should be stairs right here and we can leave. Now, uh, they're a little bit slower than the find the exit rooms, but they're not much slower once you have enough DPS. Uh, Humbly Lair, that's gonna be another one of those. We're gonna keep going through this. We got Golden Smoke, I should say. Any affliction that hurts your vision or anything, once you have all seen eye, you can basically just ignore because all seen eye overrides it all. Even there is a major, there's a major affliction. I forget what it's called, like, uh, veiled orb or something it says you can't see or uh, rooms are unknown or something like that that doesn't actually um prevent you with golden eye or or uh, what you call it i'm gonna take this just because i don't like mark of terror i'd rather sacrifice 60 percent of my resolve because mark of terror is like something that doubles the resolve damage enemies do to you and i'd rather have that than the other one uh unholy lair versus infernum i'm gonna showcase an infernum here oh uh, we're gonna get to showcase an infernum over here so i'll just do the unholy lair again just because it's a bit faster Infernums on floor three are the battleground rooms where you fight the guys and there's traps involved. The most dangerous one on floor three, in my opinion, is the one that does meteors because it's really hard to dodge and see them with the way they set up the boxes in that room. So I usually try to avoid that one. I'm just going to go through here, put our penance brands on the enemies, and they should be dead any second now. Moving, keep moving, keep moving. Just trying to make sure I can describe and go through and showcase the build. Infernum we will do, and Infernum is going to be some sort of fight room. This is the one with the meteors. This is my least favorite on floor three. 
ultimately it's pretty hard to kind of see where all the different uh, meteors are going to fall down at but so you just need to kind of be careful down the outer edges and just avoid running into the meteors where you can because they will do damage to uh, your resolve and make you lose inspiration and stuff uh, we're going to take the instilling orbs probably the most valuable loot there go for the handshake now hall of worship this is a find the exit room what i like to do is always go for the little wider opening and then go and follow it to the corner essentially find the exit rooms are always rooms that have three corners uh holy worship halls of worship is the one on the floor three that's the find the exit room on floor one is called abandoned library on floor two it's called decrepit cellar and on floor four it's called the undercroft now we can't sacrifice 200 resolve so what we're gonna do is we're gonna give up 50 percent for a major resolve essentially every single time boom two divines and that's what i'm talking about you want to do the handshakes because handshakes are a chance to get more divines pretty much if you can afford to take the sacrifice or whatever you take the worst possible trade-off when it comes to the handshake and sometimes there's good trade-offs sometimes there's bad trade-offs you need to decide how good your character is and whether or not you can afford the risk now i feel my character is very strong so i'm just going to take the risk even though i've sacrificed I, I at one point had around 500 resolve which is a way bigger barrier or um threshold for error and now I have 80, right? I'm a lot closer to, to death than I would be otherwise. But on the upside is I picked up some big boons like the all seen eye, which led me to these greater rewards. Now, this is Hull's Worship. You see the bigger opening, Gorge Series is the bigger opening, and just go towards the corner. If there's no exit, you can loot the chest if you want to. You can kill guards if you want to for a bit extra extra XP. But ultimately, uh, right now we have a lot of coins. We have basically all the good boons. I'm not sure we're going to need coins for the rest of this run. So I'm just going to go through. I'm going to look for the thing that's the worst or the least bad for us. Gain a random could be Deceptive Mirror, and that could just kill your ability to get uh, Divines on the next floor. Or you could get like the flask one, or you could get um, fiendish wings, things that make them faster. Ultimately, I'm just going to keep sacrificing my max resolve in order to avoid bad afflictions. Now, that loot wasn't good, but I rolled the dice on the handshakes and I got divines out of it. And ultimately, unless you have some guaranteed divines, which is the best possible you reward, I usually just go for the handshakes over anything else, even chaos rewards or whatever else is good there. That's typically my preferred approach. I'm gonna lure them to the corner, you but he's gonna die too fast because we have basically every damage affliction possible. Above. Hopefully we get some divines here. Any divines, an exalt or 20 fuse. Let's go with the exalt. I like to slam things. And floor four. Go ahead and rack this out. Um, I don't know if that's the phrase or not. Floor four, we are gonna go ahead and hover over to see if we are, there's any divine rewards and we're gonna target them if there are. If there are not, which there are not, then we're going to prioritize handshakes to try to get a little bit chan higher roll at getting, uh, what you call it. Now, I could just go for chaos orbs. I'm trying to think this through. I can get three handshakes if I go this route. I can get... Let's roll the dice on handshakes. There's more loot rooms in a row here, but I'd rather just roll the dice on handshakes myself because there are a chance to get the divine rewards from handshakes. And I think that's just a more fun thing to do. Um... It's not as fun to click a bunch of chaos. It's more fun to just get some divines. So that's what we're going to do here. Now, again, this is an entombment. The first of four, you can rush through, and then you can port over like that. That's usually my preferred route. There's a guard that's always going to be here. And I am going to take a bunch of hits because I'm not playing well. Uh, but basically, this is the route you want to take when you're going through this floor. Uh, do I want Assassin's Blade or do I want Major Boon? I'll lose less resolve to do this, so I'm just going to do this. The Major Boons aren't really good. At, and two Divines, so it pays to choose the handshakes now it doesn't always pay but generally i'd say if you see chaos everywhere else and you don't see a divine reward it's worth it now desecrated crypts this is the hardest room one thing i'll say about this is what you need to remember or a thing you might not realize with this room essentially is those laser towers they only do damage where the laser is hitting the ground so you say you have a laser that's going like all the way over here you can run through it here it only matters if you get hit at the very end of the laser so a lot of times that'll help you navigate those a bit better if you think about it. Man, we didn't get that many boons, but the boons we got all kind of high roll damage, hair, but all that stuff's good. All right, we got another um, entombment. These things, you'll see the fires don't start right, right away. And then if you're fast enough, you can kind of get through that first set without taking damage. Now, I actually don't have that much. Yeah, I'm going to go now. I was going to say I was going to wait a little bit, but I, I saw there was an opening. Basically, you, you wait for an opening to try to avoid fireballs in the later rooms. Um, we can't take any of these. I'm going to take this one. Um, and we're going to get gem cutters. 
We're gonna keep going up to do mausoleum, mausoleum, or lost catacombs. Now, mausoleum is the boss room, and tombment is the trap room. Lost catacombs is the fight through five guard room. And I don't know if I showed an undercroft here. I don't think I saw one, but an undercroft is the find the exit room, which basically there's four corners. The find the exit room is always four corners. Mausoleum is the boss room on floor four, and this boss should already be dead. I wait for that to go off. Don't want to get hit by an attack after he's dead. We already got empty trove. Our coins don't matter at this point, and I want more loot. Now, Mark of Terror is actually one of the more dangerous affliction. It's pretty much just taking, like, I want to say twice the resolve damage from guards. But the one I actually tie to avoid, because it's not very, like, apparent of how much damage it is, but I'm pretty sure it's literally almost double or something like that. So you want to be careful on that one. Uh, granted, we do so much damage at this point, it doesn't matter too much. I'm going to take this just because it's going to lose us the least amount of resolve possible, and we'll still let us click two divines. Wow, this is... Okay. I was just doing this as an example, and I did not... I did not purposely do this multiple times. I trust me, I wouldn't want to do this multiple times. Trying to like describe my run is a lot of work. Um, and I just took a really big hit because I wasn't really. I just okay, focus on, focus on, focus on. The sixth of my run. I need this loot. I need to not, I need to not throw if I can. Okay. <laughs> Don't click the afflicted fountain. Don't click the afflicted fountain. All right, and we'll do lost catacombs here. We have, we have six divines on the run, and I, I've been throwing away my resolve the entire run now. Now, it might come back to bite me that I threw away all my max resolve on the earlier floors. I think we'll be fine, because my character is strong enough to do most of these floors without getting hit. But if I misplay, it could end poorly for me. <laughs> all right, let's do the boss room. Boss room. As long as something doesn't bug, we'll be fine. I have been told by many people they've had some times where the Lycia bugs and gets stuck. If she gets stuck in the red smoke, don't go back, try to fight her. You'll just lose your resolve and then you'll lose the run. What you need to do is log out and then you can just redo the fight with Lycia if she bugs out. I've had people tell me that and that's usually a solution you can go for. That works on any room if you ever have to leave, say you're, say, I don't know, whatever thing interruption comes in, you can just log out and that's completely fine. So if she bugs out, we can do that. I like to preload my Prentice brand, get my Galvanic field ready and then Assassin's Mark on her. She's going to dash to the corner. No, she's already dead. So we got all the damage afflictions. Now, just wait for the red smoke to go. Red smoke is gone now. Now, we can pretty much just jump on through. And we are ready to do the fight with her. Now, we have a balance of terror run. So, Lycia, the base phase is going to be a little bit more difficult. But we didn't get any dangerous afflictions. Like, nothing that makes her tanky or anything. And we got every damage boon possible. So, this is probably still going to be pretty chill unless I misplay and one thing I will showcase is if she gets to a lightning phase if she gets to a lightning phase and part of the reason I have energy blade on my keybind is for the ability to turn it off and the thing the reason you do this essentially is to make your HP a lot harder to kill you when you're in a ball phase there's a lot of mechanics or a lot of fights where the enemy has a ball phase uber shaper has a ball phase uber exarc and regular exarc have a ball phase um, Eater has a phase, basically phases where you can't attack a boss. So there's no point in you doing damage. You might as well take the advantage of the fact that you have a much higher ES pool and you'll be much tankier during that phase. So we're going to do that if she gets to that phase, which we'll see if she does or not. This, that mechanic, whenever she does that, just stay close and jump around and you should be fine. She's already dead. Um, and that's, uh, that is what it looks like to run Sanctum on, uh... The Energy Blade character uh, at about 20 hours of gameplay, and it's been going pretty well. Hopefully, everybody who's been playing this character has been going well for you. And uh, next update will be the Tri Stack Hex Blast setup, which will essentially be targeting T17 maps. Uh, that's what I'm going to be streaming today, swapping over to that setup, and we're going to gun it. So hopefully, you guys like this intermediary, inter intermediary step. I didn't want to leave people hanging that were just doing self cast. Here's a good look at it. Here's a POB in the description of this video. Import it, enjoy it. I've killed Katava at this point. Um, and what you do once you kill Katava is just get, grab yourself a res, rule, a res jewel to fix your res. Or the other thing you can do is you can, um, you can just have better gear <laughs> with more res on it. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. As always, thanks for watching. Take care, exiles, and peace out.